My name is Michael Tim. I'm with uh, Florida Seabase. I'm the STEM director. We're here at uh, Blue Key. Uh, Blue Key is a sanctuary preservation area in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. It's one of the most visited reefs in the Florida Keys. I think one of the top reefs visited in the world. So this was named after the HMS Lou that sank here. I can't remember what year. It was in the 1800s sometime. So anyway, this spot is a very popular dive site. You can see a lot of the Snorkelers and divers enjoy it. It's a no-take zone, so there's no fishing, there's no um, harvesting of any marine life. Um, and you can see we have a series of mooring balls that we tie up to, so there's no anchoring in here as well. Um, the site is a spur and groove reef, so if you look at the, the reef structure, it's almost like the shape of your hands. Um, it has spurs of coral, followed by kind of valleys of sand. So um, this site is also very uh, crucial at this point because we are seeing a spread of a disease called, now called the stony coral tissue loss disease that started in 2014. Uh, they believe around the area of Virginia Key and Miami might be linked to the dredge of the port of Miami, what they think it might be caused by. So there's various groups of uh, researchers from uh, agencies uh, and also nonprofits to mitigate some of the effects of this disease. So this site is actually an active uh, mitigation site for the disease. So there's divers going through here. Um, Treating the disease with either uh, antibiotics, amoxicillin is one of the ones we're using, or chlorine. Injected right onto the coral. So they'll head. trench around the disease, it's called the trenching method. They'll trench around the disease area of the coral colony and try to create almost like a fire break you would in forestry to prevent a fire. So um, they're getting varying degrees of success with it. The problem is it's such a fast spreading disease that they're trying a lot of different experimental treatments at this time. Um, they have the, the reef right now is tagged with a series of what look like cattle tags and they encourage the public to take pictures of these and then report them so they can continue to monitor the reef. So there's teams out here monitoring this reef continuously. Um, with our groups we do a few different things. One of them is, is we do a pro program, a citizen science pro program called Bleach Watch that's through Moat Marine Lab and the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. We're, we're making observations for coral bleaching um, which is also uh, indication of coral stress from, from, from thermal stress. Uh, we typically see that um, in the, in, the, in the late summer months, um, according to Corey Walter, who's, who's the lead on the program, she said we're already starting to see some paling. Some disc, uh, uh, the coral starts to uh, initially lose its uh, zooxanthellae, its, its symbi symbiotic algae that's inside the tissues. The first phase of bleaching. First phase of bleaching. So what, what bleaching is, is basically the, the coral tissue itself is clear, and the symbiodinium, or the, the symbiotic algae, the zooxanthellae, are what give the coral its cover. But they account for 90% of the coral's energy, its, its metabolic requirements. So only 10% of the coral's uh, energy can come from extra tentacular feeding. Um, they require that symbiotic algae to feed. So when they get stressed, they lose that, and, and, and then they're in trouble. So they can recover from it. They can reacquire or reinfect themselves with, with the, uh, the symbiotic algae, but, or symbiodinium, but um, it's a sign of stress. And um, I think they, they've been reporting bleaching I think believe for the past 15 years, um, every year for the past 15 years, something of that sort. So it has been um, almost an annual event, uh, depending on the year. Some of these days that are really calm and, and, and uh, clear and, and bright sun, those are the ones that are bad for the corals. Um, hmm. So the ones that are good for us for snorkeling are actually the ones that are, <laughs> that are bad for the corals because they're getting a lot more UV and uh, temperature uh, uh, exposure. So, um, but being able to monitor that and report it, early allows for uh, um, for that to be reported. And that can be just as simple as taking a picture. Uh, with, we have a data sheet form that uh, from from Bleach Watch where we report. And even reporting no ble bleaching as null data, and that is still important to understand when the exact point at which uh, the bleaching occurs. So, uh, so we'll come out here and we'll record uh, you know, uh, you know, conditions and everything else so that we can kind of uh, put that in with the metadata so that it helps them uh, with their study. So it also accounts Good activity for scouts or people uh, for citizen science to get involved, looking at the reef totally. and studying it. So. Totally. And so, and so, yesterday or a couple days ago when we were here, looks like now I see one, two, three, four, five, about about six boats out here. But I, we started and there was 24 boats, and then when we left there was 28 boats out here. So yeah. What's the most 
number of vessels you think you've seen out on this reef well, the, at any one time? You'll, you'll see is, is, is if it's a busy day, especially weekends or any festivals. We're coming up soon as our underwater music festival out here, so okay. they'll have they'll probably be around, I would say, 80 to 100 boats. Oh my gosh! Just so there's depending. like six tides. So deep they'll on tide the... to like five or six deep on each mooring ball, which is allowed if it's done properly. So the National Marine Sanctuary wow. does come out here and they do enforce you know the rules as far as there are proper ways to tie up to these mooring balls. If done improperly, you may run the risk of pulling them out. Um, and not only that, we're damaging the reef. Banging so, into somebody too, uh, right? They want to prevent anybody from anchoring out here. Um, and also, the reef itself, the reef crest, is just north of us here. And you're only looking at about uh, maybe three feet of water um, on the reef crest. And at low tide, maybe even less. So um, that's an area that they, they really don't want vessels uh, going into. There are two balls, I'm sorry, three mooring balls on the north side. That's a shallow reef site. Uh, there's a lot more hard bottom over there and some, some patch coral. Um, but again, this this is, I believe, one of the top five visited reefs in the world, just based on numbers of people. Um, obviously, Great Barrier. So like on, on the order of like hundreds of thousands of people a year. Right. Yeah, I yeah. believe so. So you can imagine, you know, a day like today, there's probably a few hundred people that'll that'll be out the reef, and it's a weekday. So weekends, right. if you get a calm weekend day. Um, now, obviously, not all year is like this. Um, the spring and the winter, it's fairly windy and rough out here. You're not going to get people on the reef as much, which is probably a good thing for the corals in the reef. Gets us some time. Uh, a little to, break. A little bit, little bit of a break. And what's neat with the cruise, especially in the winter time, if we come out here and we're the only boat, you see a lot more. You know, as far as marine life, when it comes to sharks, turtles, mm -hmm. um, they kind of seem to. You know, when you have a large group of people, they they yeah, kind of yeah. move away. Spooky, a bit. spooky, yeah. spooky. So um, but if, you're, if you're the only ones here, you'll see a lot more. But and so when it's when it's more like the number of boats here, so you're saying that was a state park uh, concessionaire, yep. that's a Boy Scout liverboard uh, scuba vessel. Yep. Most of them are, are, you know, dive shops and things like yep. that. Most of them are operators. So the, and you can see most of us use all the same type of vessel. These are mm -hmm. our, our Corinthian catamarans. The good thing about them also is they can take very shallow water too. So our waters of the Florida Keys to get out here, you have to come through a very shallow. Uh, channels to get out um, but they do do fairly well offshore so mostly used you can see a heavy use by by, by charter businesses and we are a, a private charter through the PSA but uh, um, but you know on the weekends you'll see a lot more private vessels out here um, there's even a second scuba liveaboard boat that just pulled up that's another scout boat oh, cool. that showed up um, so we have local dive charters and we have our other uh, Boy Scout Corinthian back there as well. So come out for the day. Cool. Out for the day. So it's uh, all right. So Luke Key, interesting place, cool place, heavy use. Heavy use. Yes. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're